Thanks very much for joining me today, Brett, uh, in the speaker interview regarding the 8th Microbiome Movement Drug Development Summit. So the first question I wanted to ask you is, as the research and development of microbiome-based therapeutics advance, are there any therapeutic areas that excite you the most in the field and why? Well, that's a great question. And I think there are several very exciting things happening in the microbiome space. And the number of diseases that have been linked to the microbiome make this a really exciting area uh, for innovation, both for the prevention and the treatment of diseases. Uh, it's really exciting to see the progress that's being made to treat diseases that have an obvious link to the microbiome, such as C. diff or inflammatory bowel disease. But I find it incredibly fascinating that other diseases that are more associated with chronic inflammation or autoimmunity also have a strong link to microbiome dysbiosis, such as rheumatoid arthritis or multiple sclerosis. So I'm actually more excited to see the wide array of diseases that are being targeted by microbiome-based strategies. Um, but one thing that I did want to mention is that because the microbiome is so variable between individuals, I mean, imagine somebody who lives in Southeast Asia, their microbiome is going to be very different from somebody who lives in West Texas, just because the environment is different and their diet is different. So it is kind of a problem for companies like ours to be able to create uh, therapeutics that are broadly applicable just because of all of the diversity in everybody's microbiome. So I'm very interested in learning more about live biotherapeutics that can sense and respond to their environment because this gives us an opportunity to both treat a broad array of um, patients who have very different microbiomes, but that also allows us to have a very personalized treatment. So I know that's a little bit more of a technology than a therapeutic area, but I'm very interested to see where that technology is heading and where it could be in the next five or 10 years. More and more companies advancing their pioneering preclinical research and further companies entering the clinic, what would be the core areas of consideration when approaching a potential collaboration? Well, that's a, another great question. And as you can imagine, a big company like Santa Fe may have a number of different teams who are exploring the microbiome uh, for various different needs. And they may have very different criteria on how they evaluate a collaboration. But in general, we typically look for three different things. The first is, does the approach have a high probability of technical success? So for this bucket, we're looking at any data that is available uh, that can validate this approach, that it can treat its intended indication. So, for an early stage group like our group, we'd be looking for maybe animal model data. But for a later stage business development program, they might be looking for clinical trial data. So along with this, we would look for what is the strength of the IP position that the company has? And what is the scientific expertise of the team? Uh, and we wanna make sure that that really aligns with our vision for how the program would progress in the future. Secondly, we wanna ensure that the technology can be scaled to a level consistent with our needs for commercial manufacturing and that there would be uh, a path forward for regulatory approval or at least uh, reason to believe that regulatory approval could be had. But lastly and most importantly, we want to make sure that we're meeting an unmet medical need uh, and we're able to actually improve the lives of patients. Uh, along with this, we would of course want to ensure that there's a commercial market for the drug but our patients are ultimately our primary priority. So for a group like the Innovation and Emerging Sciences team at Santa Fe, we look at things a little bit differently because we're an early stage investment group. And so we're looking for technologies or therapeutics that are about five to 10 years away from being major game changers in the market. So we're really focused on investing in or partnering with groups that need to do some sort of proof of concept study um, at maybe an early stage biotech or an academic lab uh, so that we can, you know, really determine whether or not we're able to meet those needs I was mentioning before. Um, and we like to provide a little bit of guidance and some investment to help those groups get there. So I'm really looking forward to meeting some of these teams at the Microbiome Movement Drug Development Summit in June. Very much looking forward to having you on board at the Microbiome Movement Drug Development Summit. So I just wanted to ask, what are you most looking forward to? 
Well, I'm really looking forward to connecting with the microbiome community in person and meeting the people who are really pushing the boundaries of what we can achieve by targeting the microbiome for the treatment of many chronic diseases, many of which either have no therapy or have a strong need for improved therapies. I think that this is a really exciting time in the microbiome space. We have more companies forming every day and more therapeutics are entering clinical trials year over year than have ever entered before. So there's just so much innovation happening in the microbiome space. And I think that attending the microbiome movement Drug Development Summit is just a great opportunity to get ahead of the curve and learn more about these technologies and therapeutics and trends that are going to be shaping our industry and changing the lives of patients around the world over the next few years. So I'm just really excited to be involved.